Hey, how's it going everybody? It's Tanner here and welcome back to a new Ninjago video here on the channel. In today's video we are taking a look at set number 71735, the Tournament of Elements. This set is obviously meant to be a legacy stand-in for the Dojo Showdown set, which came out in 2015, and like 2015, this is obviously supposed to be a Tournament of Elements set. Taking a look at the box really quick, you can kind of see how the box scales with the actual set, and uh, the back of the box does include a couple of images uh, relating to the tournament, so that's cool. This is obviously supposed to be something that you would find in the main tournament. Hall, and as you can also see on the box, we do get the Golden Lloyd in this set, which obviously is one of the six collectible Golden Ninjas that we're getting for this year for Legacy. So that's pretty much going to do it for the box. And there's a lot to talk about here. The set retails for $29.99 USD, at least when it will come out in January. And we have a lot of stuff to get into here. So uh, let's start off by taking a look at the minifigures because I really don't know what else we're actually going to start with. In terms of minifigures, here we have the new Legacy Golden Lloyd. This is obviously not trying to be a representation of Lloyd and season four. This is just a celebratory golden figure and this one just so happens to be Lloyd. He does use right off the bat, he does use that new hair piece that we will be getting for season 14 for Lloyd with the headband and I think that looks super fun. It wraps all the way around to the back of the figure and I feel like that just looks amazing just overall. The actual printing on this golden figure though is pretty good all things considered. Obviously it uses the same legs as pretty much all of the other golden figures but the actual torso print is specific for Lloyd and I think that looks incredible. I feel like overall this is one of the best examples of of a golden minifigure. He does use that traditional, I guess, shoulder armor piece that we've been getting for years now, and the actual face itself is just the same Ninjago movie face for Lloyd that we've also been getting for years. He does come with this stand as well, which does have a little collectible uh, printed piece on there celebrating 10 Ninjago years. This is obviously a printed piece, not a sticker, so I found that to be really enjoyable. And if you didn't want to include Lloyd on a stand like this, you could always just uh, place him on this stand here and use him like that, which is obviously how I will be displaying uh, the Golden Ninja from all of these legacy sets. I feel like that stands a really good inclusion, and it does celebrate the 10 years that Ninjago has been around, so I feel like that's an awesome inclusion, especially in this set. All right, time for the actual figures that you get in this set that actually belong in this set. Here you have Tournament Kai. This is obviously a legacy remake of the Tournament Kai figure that we got from 2015. We've seen this exact same figure before in the Kai Fighter set, but now it's back for this year in this new Tournament of Elements set, and he looks incredible. Obviously, no uh, real complaints from me regarding this design. I feel like this design overall is very awesome for Kai. Uh, a quick complaint on my specific copy of this figure, the face is kind of faded a little bit. It's especially apparent when you take a look at the back of the head. It's not really something that looks all that great. It does look faded. On camera, it doesn't look so bad, but in person, it's kind of uh, annoying to me, but I can always swap that out with another Kai head and I'll be fine. But uh, yeah, this version of Kai we've seen before, so nothing really too special from this figure here. It is just a nice inclusion of this set. It's nice to get a couple of ninja uh, around this arena to kind of populate the scene. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next ninja that you get in this set. And here's the next ninja that you get in this set. This is obviously Tournament J with the correct spelling on the torso. Uh, now it actually does say Master instead of Manter like we got last year for uh, for this exact same figure. But yeah, like I've already said with Kai, we've seen this guy before, so there's not really a whole lot else to say about it. It's still the exact same uh, Tournament J figure, all things considered. The only difference between this Tournament J and the other Tournament J figures that we've received for Legacy is that it does have the correct spelling. So technically it is a different figure, but it's overall the exact same Tournament J figure that we've been seeing uh, for a long time for Legacy. This figure is about a year old now, so it's nothing too specific to the set, but, it's, but it is a nice inclusion, just like Kai. It's nice to get some ninja in the set to kind of balance things out a little bit. Just really quick, talking about the only bad guy in the set and probably the least important minifigure, here we have Legacy Izor. Not a great figure in my opinion. Izor seems to be the only figure that it actually comes in the Legacy Season 4 sets as a bad guy, so that's interesting. I hope we get more Season 4 bad guys later on, because this version of Izor is just alright. He does have that mohawk, he does have the anachondry looking uh, symbols all around him. He does have those tattoos, but just overall, I just don't care for Izor. I don't really like this figure. This is probably my least favorite figure in this entire set. So uh, yeah, nothing too big to talk about here. Let's move on to some of the biggest inclusions in this set. Now, like I said, some of the other remaining figures are actually some of this set's biggest inclusions. Let's go ahead and get started by taking a look at Bolobo. So Bolobo is obviously one of the elemental masters in the tournament. He is the elemental master of nature. And here's what his figure looks like. It's pretty good in my opinion. I don't really have any issues. He does have the uh, really long nature stick, which we saw him use in the show against Jay, and a couple of other elemental masters, so that's cool. Uh, the actual printing all around is super fun on Bolobo here. There's not really anything specific that I need to point out as being bad. The only thing that I can kind of point out as being uh, remotely negative is that this uh, figure is not entirely show 
accurate, but to me it doesn't really matter. I feel like this is still a wonderful inclusion. It's nice to get more of the Elemental Masters in the actual sets, especially for Legacy. I feel like that's an amazing place to be putting these guys, and Bilobo here is a pretty solid figure. Not really any complaints from me regarding this. This guy is really cool. Next up we have this little guy. Now this guy is Jacob the Master of Sound, and he's just awesome. I love his guitar, I love his afro, just overall he looks really incredible to me. I feel like they did a really good job on this one. I feel like just all around this is a wonderful inclusion to get in this set. Uh, obviously these three Elemental Masters that we get in this set, they are not ones that we had received before, so it's always nice to expand that collection a little bit, and Jacob here being a part of that is just amazing to me, so yeah, pretty solid figure all things considered. Uh, taking away his guitar really quick so you can check out some of the prints on his torso, it does look kind of similar to what he had in the show. Obviously it's not entirely show accurate, but it still is a nice inclusion to actually have this guy in there, so I can't really complain too much about, uh, about his design here. It still is really wonderful to even have him in the set at all. So I consider this to be a win on uh, the part of Ninjago. I feel like this is a really good inclusion for this set. And here is Gravis, the master of gravity, obviously sporting a very unique design. And I really like how this uh, guy looks overall. He does have a couple of alternate faces. This uh, face kind of has him uh, kind of concentrating or squinting, if you will. This face is a little bit more lively. I opt to use this one. I just think it's a lot more uh, in character for him. He also has these little effect parts here that are kind of purple shielded pieces. So that's cool. Uh, just overall, the design here is really well done as well. Not really show accurate either, but like the other Elemental Masters, that really doesn't matter here. I'm just happy to be receiving these guys at all. So I think this is a really good inclusion. Gravis was still a master in the tournament that we needed, so I'm glad that we can actually get him here in this set. And just really quick, in terms of other things, you do get a couple of Spinjitzu pieces. You get this new uh, Spinjitzu Tornado, which was obviously used for Forbidden Spinjitzu prior to this, and it looks all right. Obviously, you can put a figure in there and, you know, have them spin Jitsu around. It's not the most original thing ever, but you can, you know, just kind of do that, and there you go. That's awesome. Alternatively, you do get uh, one of these pieces as well, which we've seen these before. Uh, these are kind of built so if you attach a figure like Kai, for example, you can kind of um, uh, have him go around the ground like that and kind of have him use spin jitsu that way, so that's kind of fun. Overall, these uh, these inclusions are more meant for uh, the younger audience. I don't really have any use for those, so we're just going to go ahead and move on to the actual temple at hand and see what we got going on here. So yeah, now we move on to the actual temple itself. Now in terms of design, I do think that the jade blades are kind of impressive. However, that's one of the most disappointing things to me about this set. Obviously, you can see a lot of green going through here. These are supposed to represent the jade blades from uh, Season 4. However, they don't use the exact same jade blade piece that we got prior with Ninjago, which is kind of disappointing. I don't know if that piece is just out of print right now and they can't print more, but that'll be something that I do for mount modifications. I do plan on customizing this set a little bit more, and part of that modification process will be to replace all of these green blades with actual jade blade pieces. With that being said, though, these blades are actually colored really nicely in green, and I feel like those are really good. Uh, taking a closer look at one of these that we get here, the actual piece itself is quite impressive. It's a really nice green color, and uh, you can't really see that very well. But overall, I feel like that's a pretty impressive uh, piece, all things considered. It, it's just a nice inclusion. However, I wish that they were just the actual molded jade blade. That's pretty much my only complaint about this entire set, is that they are not jade blades. Otherwise, we do get a couple of levels here. Taking a look at the top level, you can kind of see a little bit of, a, of, of an arena, and I guess that's what it's supposed to be. You can include figures all around here, obviously, to kind of populate the scene. This whole space here is more than enough room to include all of the minifigures that you get in this set, so you can just put a couple of figures around here and just make a scene with them, which I feel like is super fun. But the top layer is kind of cool. You get these little things which can be cracked open. I think these are supposed to represent the cases that we actually saw in the show in uh, Skylar and Jacob's battle. Now, of course, you can open them up and uh, you can reveal another uh, jade blade, so that's cool. That's kind of what those are for. I apologize if the focus is a little off here for the most part throughout this video. Uh, I'm trying my best here. This isn't a professional review setup. But uh, taking away some of the figures again, you do get these uh, really cool, uh, these are stickers, not prints, but you do get these really cool designs here that obviously is paralleled on the other side too. And just overall, this creates a nice arena. I like these railings here as well. They look quite impressive. And just overall, I feel like this is a nice scene to display and set up. If you got all of the elemental masters here, then 
this scene would be insane. But as it stands, you don't really get everybody, but you can still populate the area with figures that you do get in this set and obviously create some type of fighting scene. So I think that's really fun and really expressive. And just overall, I feel like that's a really good uh, opportunity for both display and play alike for the older audience and the younger audience. The bottom level itself also carries a lot of the same attributes that the top level had. It's obviously supposed to continue that fighting arena. You can see some of the jade blades around here. You also get this little thing off to the side that just spins. That's obviously for training or fighting or whatever you want to do. On the other side, you just get a tree. And these are all on ball joints. So you can kind of pose these as you would like. Uh, same with this attachment over here. It's just on a ball joint. So you can kind of display that any way you see fit. You can move it forward a little bit like that. Uh, the overall interior here is pretty nice too. Obviously, you got the jade blades in the center. Over on this side, though, you actually have what is Klaus's spell book. So that's cool. And taking a look at that really quick. So yeah, this is a Klaus's spell book. It's a really nice little inclusion here. That's a sticker on the front. And that just opens up to uh, reveal a spell, which is presumably the one where uh, all of Chen's followers get turned into anachondri. So yeah, clearly something that a lot of people are going to want to be. Um, but yeah, that just sits in there. On the other side, you have a case full of roller skates, obviously trying to replicate the famous scene in uh, Ninja Roll, where the ninja participate in a tournament uh, style roller skating rink. So that's, that's kind of cool there. It's a nice little inclusion. Uh, both of those are really nice inclusions for this set. It's kind of nice to have Klaus's spellbook finally as an official piece. That's cool. And uh, yeah, just overall, the bottom is still the same as what you see on the top. Uh, the design itself for this whole arena thing is quite basic and quite average, but I feel like that's good. I feel like on its own, it doesn't work as well as if you would, you know, populate the scene with minifigures, which I feel like will be definitely how I display this thing. On the back, you don't really have a whole lot of anything. It's just, you know, the traditional um, back of something. It doesn't really look all that great in terms of uh, angles, but yeah, that'll pretty much do it for the actual arena. It is a nice base and a nice build. I like how this looks, all things considered. I feel like overall the design of this thing is really appropriate. It's definitely a lot better than the Dojo Showdown in my opinion, but yeah, it does work a lot better if you, you know, populate the scene with minifigures and stuff like that. That's really the only good look for this thing. But otherwise, that'll pretty much do it for the overall temple. So let's go ahead and wrap up this review. And that'll pretty much do it for my thoughts on the Tournament of Elements set. This is probably my least favorite set that I got out of the new Legacy line. So far, I have the Overlord Dragon, the Titan Mech Battle, and now this one. And this one is probably my least favorite out of those three, but that doesn't mean that it's a bad set. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot to be included at still a very generous piece count as well. Uh, 283 pieces for 30 bucks. That's really good, especially considering all the minifigures that you get here. This They could have easily priced this up to be like 40 bucks, but obviously they kept it at the $29.99 price point. So very good price there for a lot of really impressive minifigures. You do get a lot of the Elemental Masters in this set, which is pretty much going to be the main drive for a lot of people to get this. But I feel like most tournament fans would actually appreciate this as well. Since season four is my favorite season, I can very well say it with confidence. And this set makes me feel super nostalgic and also really happy at the same time, especially as a fan of Tournament of Elements. I feel like you're getting a lot of value here. Uh, my only real complaint is that the Jade Blades are not Jade Blades, and that's pretty much the only negative thing that I have to say about this set. Uh, overall, this is still a very fun and enjoyable set. Obviously, you get a couple of other uh, extra pieces too, as well as that new uh, Golden Lloyd figure. So clearly, they could have been doing a lot worse here. And I feel like this set overall is still very good for its value and its price. So I would highly recommend this set for any Tournament of Elements fan and pretty much any fan of the Elemental Masters because you do get quite a few Elemental Masters here in this set. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this review and hopefully you guys enjoyed me taking a look at this set. Again, I do apologize for some of the lighting and some of the framing. It's not the best thing in the world, but I do want to get my points across somehow. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and check out the links down below in the description from other forms of social media. As always, big shout out goes out to my Patreon supporters, including once again, the Marvelous Jan. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Once again, my name is Tanner Fishies, and with that, I bid you farewell. Thank you.